Archippus folded his arms underneath his head and stretched out flat on the grass. He was lying on a hill, watching the horses graze beneath him. They were beautiful, strong creatures, and he took good care of them, being careful to keep them clean and healthy. He had learned to care for horses from his father, and he had learned it from his father before him. His grandfather claimed to have been taught by Poseidon himself. Most of the people in the village dismissed it as a tall tale designed to help persuade people to buy his horses, but no one could deny his skill. His grandfather had raised the finest horses in all of Attica, and he and his father and brothers had carried on that tradition. Nobody believed the mighty Earthshaker had shown himself to Archippus' grandfather, but if it was a ruse, his grandfather had done a good job in hiding it. His horses were so fine that princes from all over Hellas came to buy them, and his grandfather made a sacrifice to Poseidon every month. It didn't really matter to Archippus if the story was true or not. He believed it was true, and he felt pride in the story, but it wouldn't have changed him if he learned that his grandfather had lied. He loved his craft. The horses were his passion, and he would tend to them until Zeus saw fit to take the strength of his arms from him, and then he would pass on his trade until Pallas took his wisdom or Hades took his soul. He tended to his horses because he had a love for tending to the creatures. He knew he would carry on with his work happily until his old age. But he was still young, and there was still an adventurous spark of youth in him. He had secretly longed for a chance to prove the skill that his family had in breeding and tending to horses. He wanted every Helen to know just how great their horses were. He wanted to race in the Olympics, and he wanted to win. He wanted to show that his horses were worthy of even the gods themselves. He had been training for years to use the chariot, and he had been raising a team of horses to pull his chariot since they were only colts. He had crafted the chariot himself, and he was eager to enter the race. He had watched the race since he was young, and he knew even before he could ride a horse that someday he would compete, and he vowed that no matter who his opponents were, he would win. The Olympics were only a few weeks away, and he could barely contain his excitement. He knew that it was his year to compete. It was as if he were born for one moment, and it was finally about to come. His hands trembled with excitement just thinking about it. He had told his parents about his secret plans earlier that morning. His mother had been less than thrilled, and his father had been hesitant. But he saw the passion in Archippus' eyes, and he knew that the boy would race with or without his parents' blessing. Archippus knew his parents would be scared but he could see the pride in his parents' faces when he announced proudly that he meant to compete. Archippus wanted his name to be enshrined with the immortal champions of the Olympics, and in spite of their fears, his father gave him his blessing. His father had been right. Archippus would have competed with or without his parents' blessing, but he was glad to have it all the same. He gazed out to his horses with pride and sighed longingly at them. He could feel the excitement coursing through his veins like lightning. Soon, he would be in the Olympics. The weeks passed quickly, and soon Archippus was in Olympia. It was thronging with people. There were tens of thousands of people in the city, all there to either watch or compete. He felt very small surrounded by so many, but he was still undaunted. He slowly made his way towards the Temple of the Gods to make an offering before heading towards the administrative center to enter his name into the race. It was his right as a free man, and any free son of Hellas was welcome, but it felt almost like a sacred thing. He felt like he was unworthy of the honor. Still, he had come to compete. More than that, he had come to win, and he intended on doing just that. Eventually, he made his way to the Temple of the Gods. He brought an offering of incense and a newborn lamb. The priests of the temple took the sacrifice and prepared it for the gods, while Archippus knelt and prayed quietly to Poseidon. Earthshaker, you have blessed my grandfather and my father before me, he said. Take this offering, and grant me your aid in this race. There was no sign that the elder Olympian had heard him, Archippus waited for an answer, but there was none. With a sigh, he stood and thanked the priest before leaving. He left the temple and found his way over to the administrative building. It was large, with beautiful columns and statues of the Olympians and the heroes of old. As he walked by the statues, he rubbed the toes of Patroclus for good luck. Then he found his place in line and began to wait. After waiting over an hour, it was finally his turn, and he stepped up to the table. He was greeted by a short, pudgy man with fat features and a bald crown. He had a short, neatly trimmed beard, and he wore a new tunic. He greeted Archippus with a nasally voice. Nay, he asked shortly, looking down at his parchment. Archippus Aix, he said. Event, the man asked in a disinterested tone. The chariot race, he said confidently. The fat man heard Archippus' voice and looked up. He glanced at him with a skeptical look. Are you sure you want to compete? He asked in a slightly derisive tone. This is the Olympics, not some child's game. I'm Archippus Aix, son of Aix Theophanes, he said indignantly. 
We raise the finest horses in all Hellas. True enough, the man said dismissively. And they're fine horses. But Ephesus makes the spear and Ares wields it. Archippus grew more frustrated with the fat man. Isn't it my right to compete? He demanded. Sure, and it's my right to run the foot races, he said. But that doesn't make it wise. Archippus snorted. <laughs> what do you know of wisdom? He demanded. I'm going to race and I intend to win. The man stood up to his full height, which was not very tall, but he looked at Archippus angrily. Take care with your insults, the man said with a dangerous edge in his tone. It is not fitting for a man to be both a bragger and a fool. You wouldn't know a good horse master if he put a bit in your mouth and paraded you through the streets, Archippus said angrily. I can beat any opponent in a race. The man barely contained his anger. He spoke loudly and rebuked Archippus. Fool and slanderer, the man said. Apologize for your words before you anger the gods. Archippus stood to his full height and straightened his tunic. I was born for the chariot, he said, and with the immortal gods as my witness, I will defeat any opponent who dares to race me. The short man lost his patience. He clapped his hands, and there was a blinding light in the administrative building. Everyone gasped and cried out in panic as the short administrator vanished in a flash of light. In his place stood a tall woman, with a long white dress, a helmet, and a spear. In her left hand was Aegis, and her black hair was neatly hidden, tied behind her head, concealed underneath the helmet. Her face shone almost as bright as the sun, and she was more beautiful than any woman Archippus had ever seen. She looked outraged, and her gaze was locked on Archippus. His eyes were still adjusting to the brightness, but he raised his eyes and looked the goddess in the eyes. You are a fool, Archippus Aix, she said angrily, but now we will see how your skills really compare to the gods. I challenge you to a race. Tomorrow morning, an hour after dawn, we will line up at the Hippodrome, and when you lose, you shall die. He could barely process what he was seeing, but his wits returned to him, and he spoke boldly to the goddess. I accept your challenge, Pallas Athena, he shouted. You will see tomorrow that my horses and skill are worthy of the Olympians. We shall see, she said coldly, and as quickly as she had come, she was gone. Everyone else in the building was still recovering from the shock of seeing one of the immortal gods. Archippus was shocked too, and he wanted to curse himself for challenging the goddess, but there was no going back. He straightened his tunic and left the administrative building. Archippus woke up before the sun and readied his team of horses. He made sure they had been run through their paces before he harnessed them to the chariot. The Hippodrome was on the far side of the city, and Archippus had to stay outside the city because it was so full. Once the chariot was ready, he made his way towards the Hippodrome. Before he entered the city, though, he saw an old man sitting outside the city, holding a walking stick in his hands. He was in a hurry, but he felt for the old man. Hello, sir, Archippus called out. Are you going to see the contest? I'd like to see the race, the old man said, sounding unsure. But all my sons have abandoned me here, and I can't make it there on my own. Archippus slowed his chariot to a stop and got out to help the old man. Come with me, he said. I'll take you to the race. I'm heading there now. One of the drivers, eh? he asked. Who are the other six? There's only one other today, Archippus said. Only one? the old man asked in astonishment. Have that few Helens decided to compete? Archippus laughed as he drove the chariot towards the hippodrome. No, man, he said. The goddess Athena has challenged me to a race. By the gods, the man said. Why would she do that? I'm Archippus Aix, son of Aix Theophanes. We raise the finest horses in all Hellas, he said. I bragged that I could beat anyone in a race, and Pallas was all too eager to accept. You said your grandfather was Theophanes, he asked. I heard he was taught by Poseidon, lord of horses. True enough, man, Archippus said. But Athena made the chariot and believes the horses count for nothing. A skilled driver can make quite a difference, the old man said. Will you actually race the goddess? It's my head if I don't, Archippus said, but I stand by my claim. I trust the art of Poseidon to grant me victory. But outrace an Olympian, and Athena no less, the old man said doubtfully. You will need better horses than even the greatest in all Hellas. These horses are the blessing of Poseidon, Archippus said, trying to sound confident, but a grim doubt began to work its way into his heart. I'd put them up against even the Olympian steeds. They arrived at the Hippodrome and saw the crowd gathering around Athena. Most of the people had fallen prostrate at her feet, but a few stared at Archippus as he arrived, as if a corpse had just ridden into their midst. Archippus was too focused on the crowd to be sure, but he thought he saw the old man sneer slightly at the goddess. I'm no prophet, but I see your future clear enough, the old man said. There is no shame in walking away, and the goddess will not harm you if you do. But if you're smart, you will take my advice. Pray to Lord Poseidon aloud to the masses, and reaffirm your challenge to Athena. Archippus was worried enough as it was, but he didn't think there was any hope of withdrawing from the race. 
he decided to take the man's advice. He took a deep breath and spoke loud enough to be heard by the crowd. Poseidon, lord of the sea, mighty earthshaker, I drive my chariot in your name. Great skill with horses you have granted my family. Grant me victory in this race, that all may see that your craft rivals that of any Olympian. Pallas Athena, I accept your challenge. The crowd stared in awe, and Athena glared at him with a barely contained fury. She stood in her chariot of gold and ivory, with flawless white horses. She was dressed for battle, and when she spoke to Archippus, her voice dripped with rage. Your death will be slow and painful, mortal, she said with a powerful voice. On what grounds do you dare to oppose the immortal gods? The ground shook, and there was a flash of light, causing all the people in the crowd to gasp and tumble to the ground. Do not threaten my champion, Athena, a voice said from behind Archippus. He turned to look where the old man had been, but he was gone. In his place stood Poseidon himself, trident in hand. The god continued, His offense is no greater than your offense in challenging the craft of an elder god. She looked at him angrily, but she chose her words more carefully with the earth shaker. Let him be your champion, then, she said dismissively. We shall see once again which of the two of us is greatest. Poseidon turned to Archippus and spoke. I cannot guarantee your life any more, the god said. Drive hard and be careful. Athena is known for her craftiness. With that, he smiled and disappeared in a salty spray of mist. Archippus felt nervous, but he steered the team of horses to the starting line. He took the outer lane, next to the goddess chariot. He expected an ugly sneer or a wicked grin, but instead she gave him a stony glance and looked back at the course in front of her. Archippus felt his muscles tense, and he could feel as the anticipation built. Finally, a nervous-looking boy came out with a horn in hand. He let out one loud, clear trumpet blast, and the two were off. Athena's chariot seemed to almost fly. It sped away from the starting point faster than lightning, pulling ahead of Archippus. His horses took off immediately, but there were still a good five car lengths ahead. He refused to be discouraged. He took charge of the reins and drove the horses forward. He took a deep breath and shouted in excitement as the horses took off. They were so swift and powerful that he could hardly believe he was on the ground. He felt like he was an eagle, riding the winds in a storm. He felt the thrilling rush as the horses began gaining on Athena. They were so fast that he felt like the chariot was constantly fighting to keep up with his horses. He followed her around the track and managed to regain the lost ground. And just as they made it past the second turn and began racing back to the starting line, he caught up with the goddess. She looked over indignantly and saw that his horses were neck and neck with hers. The goddess, in her fury, let go of the reins with one hand and struck out at Archippus with her spear. His eyes grew wide and he barely managed to duck below the blow from the weapon as the spear impaled the spot where he had been. He thought about moving farther away from the goddess, but her spear could reach a long way, and he knew that she would either pursue him or use some Olympian magic to attack him in his car. Archippus had not come unprepared, though. He grabbed a javelin from his car and threw it at the wheels of the goddess chariot. It slid between the spokes and the right wheel and impaled the ground, snapping two spokes and sending Athena's chariot swerving violently. She was furious, but there wasn't enough time for her to deal with Archippus and the chariot. She fought to regain control of the car as they rounded the corner. Archippus thought he might have gained the upper hand, and he started to pull ahead of the goddess, but she let out a crazed laugh and the earth began to tremble. In front of their cars, where the starting line had been, there was now a large building with a golden tile roof and bone-white marble pillars. The doors were made out of solid bronze, and they swung open in front of Archippus and Athena. It was dark through the door, and he felt a chill go down his spine. He realized that the goddess had set for the second lap to be in the underworld. She pulled ahead of him and sped into the darkness. With a grim look, he followed behind her and guided the chariot down the dark descent. They sped through the underworld. The Furies watched them above with wicked delight, and Archippus saw a large palace looming in the distance. It seemed to glow with a dark beauty. In front of the palace was a large hound with three heads, and on the left side was a dark river. He could smell the death around him, and it made him want to gag. The whole place felt dark and oppressive. As they raced through the underworld, Archippus realized that the goddess had not chosen a random road. He saw, as his eyes adjusted to the darkness, that they were actually racing through the Hippodrome of Erebus. He began to see specters of long-dead heroes gather around to watch them. He saw Achilles and Patroclus, Agamemnon, Odysseus, and Nestor. He saw Theseus, Jason, and Perseus. He saw Minos, Ovadne, Io, and many more of the fallen Hellenes watching this race with the goddess. And above them all, Hades and Persephone watched eagerly. The goddess led the way through the underworld, with Archippus close on her tail. The Hippodrome seemed to shift as they raced. The first lap in the underworld had been through the fields of Asphodel, and then the second through Tartarus. 
Archippus felt the heat of the hellfire licking his face, and he winced to see the torments being inflicted on the souls around him. When that lap ended, he was glad to leave it behind. He and the goddess continued to exchange blows as they raced through the underworld. It was all Archippus could do to keep himself from being skewered by Athena's spear, and it was all the goddess could do to keep her car under control as Archippus lashed out violently at the body of the chariot. Finally, they left Tartarus, and at the beginning of the fourth lap, they entered the Elysian Fields. It was glorious to behold, filled with temples, gardens, and mansions that seemed to cater to every whim of its ghostly inhabitants. It looked so wonderful that Archippus almost gave up the race to stay in Elysium, but the goddess made sure to keep his attention with her spear. The two continued their race, leaving the underworld and bursting forth to the surface above. Archippus almost panicked when he saw the fifth lap ran over the ocean waves. He thought his horses would drown and him with him, but they seemed to charge forward with renewed spirits as they ran across the water as swiftly as if they had been running on the ground. The water nymphs gathered around and watched and Poseidon drove his own chariot across the waves as he followed the race. Archippus kept his focus on the reins and guided the horses across the water. His horses sprayed the salty seawater behind him as they ran. He looked out in amazement at the hippodrome of the ocean. It was as if the water itself had formed the track for their chariots. The naiads floated on the surface of the waters and watched the race with excitement. He felt a sense of pride as the nymphs cheered for him, and he stood proud and laughed with joy as they raced across the waves. He managed to regain his place next to Athena, and the two turned a tight corner. She thrust her spear at him, grazing his shoulder, and he drove his chariot into hers, causing her to veer off course. He pulled ahead slightly as they finished the fifth lap. He cried out in surprise when at the beginning of the sixth lap, his horses began climbing into the sky. Pallas began to pass him again, and she led the way through proud Olympus. Archippus was filled with excitement. They raced past Apollo in his sun chariot, and their horses ran alongside the Pegasi with their majestic wings. Finally, he saw shining Olympus in the distance, and he watched as the host of immortal gods gathered around to watch him and Athena. Some gods cheered for Pallas, and others for Archippus. Mighty Zeus, lovely Demeter, proud Hestia, watchful Artemis, and crafty Hephaestus all cheered for Athena. Drunken Dionysus, strong Ares, beautiful Aphrodite, jealous Hera, and swift Hermes cheered for Archippus. He felt the glory of Mount Olympus fill him, and he urged his horses to run faster. He grinned with a euphoric thrill as he watched the white marble palaces roofed with gold, the fountains of ambrosia, and the lovely Olympian gardens speed by him. He turned the second corner, and he and Athena raced around the thrones of the gods. They were glorious to behold, and Archippus was struck with awe at their beauty. He was able to admire them better, because he and the goddess had stopped exchanging blows on the top of the holy mountain, and he marveled at the beauty of the heavenly city. Finally, the sixth lap ended, and he and the goddess began descending back to the earth. They crossed the starting line and began their final lap around the Hippodrome of Olympia. All the people cried out in shock and surprise as the two came thundering back onto the racetrack. They were still neck and neck with each other, and they began exchanging blows again. As they rounded the first corner, Archippus began to pull ahead again, but the goddess had one more scheme to try. She clapped her hands, and Archippus felt the reins change in his hands. He looked down in horror to see that they were turning into venomous serpents. Archippus cried out in terror, and his car began swerving wildly across the track. The reins in his hands sprouted heads and began hissing and fighting him. The goddess pulled ahead, and it was all Archippus could do to keep him crashing. He glanced up at the goddess and saw that she was leaving him behind, and he knew he would lose if he couldn't regain control of his chariot. As he looked at the goddess, one of the serpents bit him and he cried out. He could feel the venom burn its way through his veins. He felt despair begin to weigh on him like a heavy stone, and he cursed his luck. He had been winning, and because of the goddess trick, he would lose and die to the serpent's venom. He felt anger surge within him, and he let out a defiant cry. He was the best horse master in Hellas, and he would win at any cost. He seized the serpents firmly and wrestled them back into place. The reins were still slowly transforming into snakes, but they were still connected to the horse's harness, and he wrestled the chariot back on course and drove the horses with a mad frenzy. He began gaining ground again, and the goddess looked back in shocked surprise to see that he was close behind her. He could feel his strength failing, and the darkness began creeping in around his vision. He felt like he would faint, but the finish line was too close for him to give up. He drove his chariot into the goddess's chariot, cutting her off as he thundered towards the finish line. She caught up again, and he was only inches ahead. He knew that he would die soon, but he whipped the reins one last time and let out his final cry. His horses thundered across the finish line, inches ahead of Athena. He wanted to shout out in triumph, but all he could manage was a weak smile. He let go of the reins and collapsed out of the chariot. He was dead before he hit the ground, but it didn't matter. He had beaten the goddess in their race. He had died a champion. 
the greatest chariot racer that had ever lived. She pulled on the reins and brought her chariot to a stop. Her eyes burned with fury. She might have cursed Archippus, but Poseidon appeared again, and she checked her rage. All the Hellens bowed down before the gods, but the Earth Shaker ignored them. He knelt down sadly over Archippus. The race is over, and he is the victor, Poseidon said. He rose and touched his trident to Archippus' body. Your rightful prize is to join the immortals, and so your prize shall be. Archippus' body slowly began transforming until he was a horse. He stood up, and he looked beautiful and noble, with strong limbs, pure white fur, and a proud mane. He was the finest steed in all the earth. Poseidon got on top of Archippus' back and rode the steed towards the Aegean, taking his servant and steed with him.